against all odds and with a slim chance of survival? You're either history or you make history. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 amazing survivor stories. For this list, we're sharing the most incredible accounts of unfortunate individuals who managed to cheat death. Whether it was luck, an act of God, or the will to live, these survivors shocked the world by shooing off the Reaper. Number 10. The Donner Party It wasn't an easy feat, and surely wasn't easy on the feet back in the day when pioneers were seeking better lives. It was a land of opportunity. You can make of yourself what you want. You're only held back by your own desires. In May 1846, James F. Reed and George Donner led a group of Americans by wagon train to California. Hoping to reach the state before snowfall, they took a new route and reported shortcut called the Hastings Cutoff. Hastings Cutoff is said to be a saving of 400 miles. We are informed it is a fine level road with plenty of water and grass. Though it should have been an easy route, the Donner Party ultimately found themselves snowbound in the Sierra Nevada mountains during the winter of 1846 to 1847. Their food supplies slowly became scarce, which meant that some of the pioneers turned to cannibalism. In the end, only 48 of the 87 members of the party survived to tell this riveting tale. If I don't see you again, you do the best you can. <sighs> Number 9. Hugh Glass He was mauled so bad, his ribs were visible from behind. This American frontiersman lived a life with a high tolerance for pain. In 1823, Hugh Glass was on a fur trading venture with dozens of men when he encountered a grizzly bear that started his journey of agony. He killed the bear, but at a price of multiple flesh lacerations and a broken leg that had the rest of the expedition consider him a goner. It wasn't if he was going to die, it was just how long he would live. Glass was promised a proper burial after his death when the leader of the expedition asked for two volunteers to stay behind, but he was instead deserted and betrayed. Glass then took a rain check on the burial and crawled his way to the nearest camp. It took six weeks, but he managed to survive by consuming berries and preventing gangrene by letting maggots eat his infected flesh. Number 8. Beck Weathers. I was very fortunate that I was able to be strong enough to get back to Dallas. Those that tread Mount Everest have two goals in mind reaching the summit and staying alive to tell the tale. This is my death certificate. This is a fax that was received by my wife. It states basically that uh, I've died. It tells where I am on the mountain. On May 10th, 1996, 49-year-old Beck Weathers was suffering from health problems during his climb to the summit. After going almost entirely blind, he stopped his ascent and was waiting for his guide when a massive blizzard struck. Throughout his time on the mountain, he slipped in and out of consciousness, spent multiple hours in the sub-zero temperatures, and was left for dead on numerous occasions. Though he managed to walk down to camp and survive these extreme conditions, Weathers didn't come out unscathed, as he ended up losing his nose and having most of his left hand and right arm amputated. I gave up some body parts, but I got back my relationship with my wife, with my kids. I was forced to reevaluate my life. I always lived in the future, and now I live in the present. Number seven. Brad Kavanaugh and Deborah Scale and Kylie. Brad and I went up on deck to take our next watch, and it was wildly out of control. What started off as a simple sailboat delivery from Maine to Florida quickly turned into an absolute nightmare after bad weather shipwrecked a crew of five in October of 1982. Sailor Deborah Scale and Kylie was hired to crew a sailing yacht named the Trashman when the heavy rain and winds of a sudden storm unexpectedly hit. Now we had no engine, no sail, and we were just floating out there in the ocean. After the boat sinks, the crew members begin to lose their minds and their wills. It was as if I had dropped the final curtain on the show. They just all kind of sat back and looked at me. Like I'd lost my mind. Meanwhile, sharks, dehydration, and infections from injuries threaten their lives. Five days later, only Kylie and Brad Kavanaugh remain alive, barely, and they are rescued by a Soviet cargo ship that just happens to be passing by. I, I didn't care where I was going, I didn't care who these people were. I was lying there, and Brad was there, and we were alive. Number six, Phineas Gage. On September 13, 1848, Phineas Gage was in charge of blasting rocks for railroads when he accidentally aligned his face with the blast hole after being distracted by his workers. This allowed the over three foot tamping iron just enough time to shoot through his face and out through his head. <laughs> 
Even after the debilitating accident, Gage was conscious, and while he was being examined by his physicians, he reportedly lost a chunk of his front brain when it fell onto the floor. Although he recovered, Gage was left emotionally unstable, which sparked discussions of personality changes linked to the damage of the front lobe. Paul won't miss this little piece here, which is the uh, part of the prefrontal lobe, which they say is the seat of good manners. Number five. Aaron Ralston. If you're gonna go out, just go with a friend, please, yeah. Yeah, the buddy system, yeah. Aaron, you've yeah. heard of that, right? I know, we all learned that when we're five, but yeah. In this story, the impractical becomes practical, even if it means shedding some blood. What would I do if I were in a situation where my life was on the line? Oh, you really wanted to know? Well, here, you're gonna find out, Aaron. In April 2003, Ralston went on an ordinary hike through Blue John Canyon. After a boulder unexpectedly dislodged while he was descending, his right hand was crushed against the canyon wall. For five days, he remained trapped, while slowly eating away at what little food he had, and even resorting to drinking his own urine when he ran out of water. With no one aware of his whereabouts, Ralston ultimately did the unthinkable. Using a multi-tool, he amputated his right arm with a dull blade, which took about an hour. It may have been a slow and painful process, but it turned out to be the decision that saved his life. No regrets at all. If I had to do it all over again today, and, and now uh, with the, the blessings of my life that, that I have today, I mean, I would cut my other hand off in order to get back to my son. Number four, Jose Salvador Alvarenga. I didn't think I was going to die. I always thought I was going to make it out alive. While Olympic runner and World War II prisoner of war survivor Louis Zamperini also survived drifting at sea for 47 days, it's the story of the Salvadoran man who survived 13 months adrift in the Pacific Ocean that makes our list. In November 2012, two fishermen, Alvarenga and Esquivel Cordoba, departed from the coast of Mexico, but were thrown off course after a storm. Losing the will to survive, Cordoba stopped eating and died, leaving Alvarenga to consider suicide for many months. Surviving on urine, seabirds, turtles, and fish, it was on the 438th day of his voyage that Alvarenga spotted an island of Ebon Atoll, to which he swam and from which he was ultimately rescued. Weak and appearing overwhelmed, was unable to speak. Number three, Nando Parado. If the person had an accident like the one Nando had, the treatment we would do nowadays in the 21st century is actually exactly what nature did to Nando uh, with total serendipity in 1972. On Friday the 13th, in October of 1972, the Uruguayan rugby team, along with their family and friends, was flying over the Andes Mountains en route to an upcoming match. Terrible weather conditions caused the plane to crash on a peak now called the Glacier of Tears with a dozen people killed due to and following the crash itself. At the time, we didn't know that the safety record of that model was absolutely horrible. Had we known that, we would have never got into that airplane. An avalanche ultimately killed several more survivors. Meanwhile, with few sources of food, multiple injuries, and tons of snow, those left alive were forced to turn to cannibalism. We said, if I die, I will be very proud of you. Take me and eat me until someday if you go out from this mountain. After two months in the mountains, Nando Parado and a partner eventually sought help, trekking for 10 days through the Andes until they made contact with a Chilean man. A rescue team was finally sent, though only 16 of the 27 that had survived the original plane crash were still alive by then. I got used to it very, very easily because my mind was fighting against things that were more important. Number two, Ernest Shackleton. Although built to maneuver through ice, the ship known as the Endurance found herself lodged in the ice of the Weddell Sea. Her skipper, Ernest Shackleton, and his crew converted the icebound vessel into a winter camp. As spring arrived, the hull began giving way and the ship sank, leaving the crew to set up camp on the drifting ice. It was a new thing. I mean, uh, he'd seen snow as a kid, but never set foot on an iceberg like that. Shackleton led his men from ice flow to ice flow with the hopes of arriving safely at Paulette Island. But a month into his journey, and just 60 miles from the island, the ice broke, forcing the men into lifeboats. Just days later, the adventure came to an end at Elephant Island, for a total of 497 days at sea. It's the roughest ocean in the world we were trying to cross in a boat that's just not designed for it, a 22-foot rowboat with sails added on afterwards, so no keel. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. On Halloween of 2003, I was surfing with um, my friend and her brother and dad, and then 
I lost my arm to a shark. A shark just came and bit it off. Three and a half days, they walked down from the crash at 11,000 feet out of these never, never mountains. Five days, and still no sign of a rescue attempt. Some of the men began to lose hope. Number one, Vesna Volovich. Few people have survived airline crashes, but nothing compares to the momentum of Vesna Volovich's fall. In January 1972, flight attendant Vesna Volovich was on a plane when a bomb exploded while they were in mid-air. Vesna fell over 33,000 feet. She still has no recollection of the landing. It did leave her with a fractured skull, broken legs, and broken vertebrae that left her temporarily paralyzed, as well as with the Guinness Book of Records title for the survival of the highest fall without a parachute. Following the fall, Volovich was in a coma for 27 days and only discovered upon waking up that she was the sole survivor of the crash. Do you agree with our list? Or do you have other amazing stories of survivors you'd like to share? For more top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Pretty much right then, I knew I'd be surfing and being in the ocean um, for as long as I could live or have the ability to do it.